Hello friends, one of the most important parameter in the design of asphalt mix is the percent air wires and most of the standards specify that this air wire should be 3 to 5 percent. This 3 to 5 percent is the range which is suggested in many standards and there is a reason for that because if air wires are very high or very low that can affect the payment life. If air wires are very high, then mix can present several problems. Like entry of air through these wires can accelerate the process of aging of binder. The layer becomes stiff and it will affect the fatigue life of the payment. High air wires can also create the space for entry of water and that will create the problem of durability of the mix. They can also result in the secondary compaction of the layer after it is open to traffic. The accepted knowledge on this subject suggests that 1% increase in the air wires can result in 10% decrease in the payment life. And therefore, air wires should not be very high. At the same time, it should not be very low also. If air wires are low, then it will not create a space for expansion of the binder in whole season. The Asphalt Institute website suggests that if air wires fall below 3%, there will be inadequate room for expansion of asphalt binder in hot weather and when it drops below 2%, then the mix becomes plastic and unstable. And for these reasons, it is important to control the air wires in a hot mix asphalt. Now today's session is to suggest you, to give you some tips on how to control these air wires when you design a bitterness mix. Now air wires is given by this equation. You can write VV or you can write AV that this is GMM minus GMB upon GMM into 100. This is the theoretical specific gravity of the asphalt mix. This is the bulk specific gravity of the asphalt mix. And this is air wire. Now you can control these air wires either by increasing or decreasing these parameters. So if you reduce this gap, then air wires will reduce and if you increase this gap air wires will increase and you can do that by either change of binder content or by change of aggregate gradation because job mix formula is being prepared through aggregate and binder only so you have only two options either change the binder content in the mix or change the gradation. Now let me explain one by one. In case of GMB, GMB is estimated on the compacted sample which is prepared in the laboratory. As the binder content increases, the lubricity in the mix is increased and this lubricating effect of binder on aggregate particles that will provide easy compaction. And when easy compaction means basically volume of the specimen will reduce slightly. And when volume is reduced, then the density will increase. Now that is well known relationship between the density and binder content. Let us say PB. That initially it increases and then it is start decreasing. When binder content becomes excessive, then it will not create lubricating effect, rather it will, the, the, the aggregate particles start floating in the binder and the volume of binder will increase and that will basically decrease the density. So this is what we call the optimum binder content at which the density is maximum. Now GMM GMM is estimated on uncompacted loose mixture. So there is no concept of air wires when you are 
calculating or estimating GMM. That is theoretical specific gravity when there is no air wires in the mixture. This GMM is given by this equation 100 upon PS upon GSE plus PB into GB. Now, this is the percentage of stone aggregate, this is the percentage of the binder, specific gravity of binder, and effective specific gravity of aggregates. Now, let us take some example how this GMM will change with the binder content. Let us say you assume that GSE of stone aggregate is 2.80 and this specific gravity of binder is 1.02 and let us say PS is 95 percent and PB is 5 percent. Put all these values here and you get this GMM 2.5. 575. Now change the binder content to 6%. Change the binder content to 6% now. Now it goes, when it goes 6%, this will be 94%. PS is now 94, this remains same. PB is 6, this remains same. So this GMM will now be 2.534. Why? Why it is reducing? Because this parameter, this parameter is now larger. Volume of binder. You see, if you calculate what is the volume of binder you are adding here and what is the volume of stone you are removing from this. So, volume of binder in the first case. In this case, volume of binder will be 5 upon 1.02. This is 4.9, let us say, centimeter cube. Whereas in this case, this will be 6 upon 1.02. This is 5.88 centimeter cube. This is the increase in the volume of binder when you are increasing 1% binder content. And how much stones are being removed? In case, in the first case, 95% divided by 2.8, that is 33.928. And when you have 94%, then this is 94 by 2.8, this is 33. 0.57. From 33.928, 33.57, there is a reduction in the volume of stone aggregate. But increase in the volume of binder is from 4.9 to 5.88. If you take the ratio, how much is the difference here? The difference here is just 3.358. That is the removal of stone aggregate from the mixture. And how much is added? 5.88 minus 4.9, that is 0 0.98. 0 0.98. So, volume added in the mixture is 0 0.98 centimeter cube, and volume removed from the mixture is just 0.358. This is almost 2.7 times this volume. I have taken the example for assumed value of density, specific gravity of aggregate and bitumen. If you consider the variation in the, in the specific gravity of aggregate, average value is 2.5. So, the volume of mixture will always increase with increase in the binder content. And it is because the volume of binder added is roughly 2.5 times the volume of solids removed from the mixture. And therefore, this is very sensitive. GMM is very sensitive to binder content. And this goes like this. This is GMM. And this is GMB. So, when binder content is very low, the difference here is very high. Air wires will be very high. As you increase binder content, 
there is a highest point here and that will give you the binder content which is very low and that is why you get the correlation between the binder content and air wires like this that initially it reduces in a very sharp slope and then finally it stabilizes at some value so this these two lines becomes almost parallel after this obc so that is why this becomes almost horizontal now second second method of controlling these air wires is the aggregate gradation amount of coarse aggregate and amount of fine aggregate now fine aggregate as per our indian standards it is the material passing 2.36 mm c but as per ms2 it is passing 4.75 mm c if you take a aggregate gradation which is finer then the air wires will reduce and similarly if you want to increase air wires take the coarser gradation coarser gradation of the mixture now see here how it helps now this gsc the effective specific gravity of stone aggregate this is slightly larger than slightly larger than in some cases extreme case can be equal also gsb that is the bulk specific gravity of stone aggregates so if and this gsb is calculated using this equation gsb is proportion of coarse aggregate proportion of fine aggregate divided by proportion of coarse aggregate divided by specific gravity of coarse aggregate plus proportion of fine aggregate divided by specific gravity of fine aggregate that is gsb so for today's discussion if you assume that this gsb is more or less same as gsc now see how this gsb changes when you change the proportion of fine aggregate again we take some example an example is that let us say pca in a mixture is equal to pfa and that is 50 percent 50 percent coarse aggregate 50 percent fine aggregate if you take example of dbm grade 1 that is percent passing 2.36 is allowed up to 42 percent in case of bc1 it is up to 44 percent so let us take for just uh, for explanation let us take that pca and pfa they are 50 50 percent and this specific gravity of coarse aggregate is 2.718 and specific gravity of fine aggregate is 2.668 how much you get gsb now gsb is 100 this is always 100 percentage of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate 100 upon 50 upon 2.718 plus 50 upon 2.668 and this is equal to 2.692 2.692 now let us increase the percentage of course aggregate to 80 percent now okay so pca is now 80 percent and fine aggregate is 20 percent Specific gravity remains same. So this GSB will be 2.707. What do you get from this? That when you increase the content of fine aggregate from 20% to 50%, your GSB reduces from 2.707 to 2.692. So increase in fine content will reduce the GSP. And GSB I have assumed equal to GSC. So when this is reduced, this parameter will increase. And therefore, this will reduce. So GMM will reduce. Binder content is same. We have not changed the binder content here. We have only changed the gradation. Now when you increase the fine content, then density also increases. Density of the mixture will increase. If you are not going much beyond than the optimum fine content so when the density then when the fine aggregates are increased or filler content is increased 
density will increase slightly. That is your GS, that is your GMB. So, GMM is reduced by increasing the fine content and G, GMB is increased slightly by increase of fine content in the mixture. So, that will reduce the air wires. Similarly, if you want to increase the air wires, then in that case you have to choose a gradation which is coarser in nature by the same philosophy. There are situations when you need to increase the wire contents, air wires, without changing gradation and without changing binder content. For example, if you want to find out what is the ITS of a bitumous mixture. So, optimum binder content is fixed, gradation is fixed. You design as per Marshall specimen and then you find out for ITS, you prepare a specimen at 7% air wires. So, in that case, you can reduce the compactive effort by changing the number of blows given to the specimen that can also increase the air wires. So, that is how you can control air wires in a bitumous mixture. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any doubt, any question, you can write in the comment box.